everyone. Welcome back to another Open Studio Hour. I am Jamie Fisher and I am uh, the art director here at Jerry's Artorama. And so here on Open Studio Hours, as some of you know and some of you may not, we um, have artists come in, usually Emmy or myself, and we just work on a piece throughout the hour or we may do some swatching. We're just, well, hanging out in the studio with you guys, working on something that we need to get done. And so um, today I'm actually working on an old piece that I've pulled up. And it's kind of embarrassing how old this piece is. We won't go into years, um, but I have decided that I really want to work on it again and back in the day I had put spray fixative on it um, and it's a workable fixative so that I can go back and keep adding layers so I knew one day eventually I would come back to it and here I am so I really want to um, punch up some of the highlights I have in here and darken some of the darks so this is going to be my project today. It's also um, in preparation to work with another great project. Um, we have a new product that's coming out that we're really excited about. So, you know, keep a lookout for that. So I'm just going to start working on this piece and you guys can just chill with me and ask questions or talk about your day. Just anything as I go along. I can hear our volume on the iPad. <laughs> I can hear myself talking to myself. <laughs> like, I know I'm crazy. I haven't gone that crazy. Oh, oh God. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord. All right, thank you. It is barely taped down. It's not supposed to be. It's just taped around the edges. Which way do you want it scooched? Um, yeah. Oh, we want to get me out. I yeah. see that one. Okay. There we go. It's very right. hard to like flip yourself into. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I guess it would be nice if everybody could actually see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my darker compressed charcoal. And I'm just going to kind of work intuitively here since I've had a lot of time to sit back and look at this guy. I'm just going to add some darker shadows in here with the compressed charcoal. I'm also going to be using um, a, a creative mark set that's blending, it's a blending uh, charcoal and pastel set and uh, this has a lot of great little blending elements to it. Um, it comes with several different sizes of stumps and these are great if you're using charcoal because then you don't get your, one, you don't get your fingers dirty which I'm fine with doing, personally. That's one of the reasons why I love charcoal. But then uh, you also get your finger oils in there, like really pressing um, into the paper so that you can't pull it and erase it back out. And it also just helps you get a really nice smooth gradient or blend. Hey, 
Terry. Well, this isn't one of our um, lesson live feeds. Those you tune in on Tuesdays for, um, every other Thursday of the month we do open studio. So that's just where Emmy and I are in the studio working on something. However, Jerry's Live on Tuesdays with Emmy is where you want to go if you want a full and complete lesson. So this is just asking questions to whichever artist may be working at the time. Or telling us about your day. But we do give tidbits here and there while we're working. Um about techniques and what we're using, what our materials are. As for the music, I think the music's nice and calming, but I guess we could always switch it up and put some Taylor Swift on. I mean, I'm always sure <laughs> that, but I don't know if Miss Swift would like it. <laughs> we'll put some techno on. Yeah. It's so pretty. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that um, was actually a whiskey decanter. Oh, nice. I set up this whole um, still life. Um, the little candelabra back here, some sunflowers and mums. Um, these were a few poetry books I had around. This actually is a crow skull that I still have hanging out. His name is Eustace. And he has a nose ring. Um, yes, it's very lovely. I need to pull that out. That's one of the elements I need to pull out. But yeah, he's my little punk crow. He keeps me company at my studio at home. I wanted to say that I tried to name your crazy chicken Eustace. It's a good name. Now? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what we went with. It could have been. We can look it up. I really liked um, Courage the Cowardly Dog. So that's one of the characters from it. I will admit to have watched maybe two episodes in my whole life. <gasps> no, you need to go you need to go back and watch um See, but Courage wasn't the only cowardly one. <laughs> I just couldn't. It was too much. I'm such a chicken. Aww. But he's a friendly dog. And he overcomes evil. It's like, it's a positive, positive message. I don't know, something about it, I've just, I'm such a baby and scaredy cat that I was just like, mm, I don't like these vibes. It is very creepy. It is, it is very creepy. But I think that's why I like it. I do, I do tend to lean towards those creepier animations. And since this is a textured paper, using this uh, blending stump really helps me get into the little grooves. The texture helps pull the charcoal and then the blending stump helps to push the charcoal in. I 
And blending stumps get dirty very quickly. Um, the little kit that I'm using, it actually comes with this little um, carb, uh, it's like an emery board, basically um, just sandpaper or like you would uh, file your nails. And so you would just gently take this and rub the excess off of your blending stump. But I actually like when I get excess on the blending stump because then I can use it as another drawing tool. So if I'm blending for a little while and see another area that I want to add some charcoal to, I can just pick up and then go start working over there. And it'll lay down a soft layer. Did we go with Eustace? I don't remember I'm I feel like a lot of people got behind that name. Oh, I, think, <laughs> I think it was Eustace von Dutch Hagelstein. <laughs> and I said, a noble name indeed. <laughs> the noble von Dutch Hagelstein family. Oh, yes. I'm gonna have to pull, pull him up. He needs to be framed. I've loved him. In a, in a huge frame, not just not just any frame, like a huge, huge fancy frame. I, I was actually, I was, I was really pleased with how he came out. I don't know if you've ever seen Rockadoodle. Oh yes. But if they oh. made a sequel and needed another villain, <laughs> it would be that chicken. <laughs> the chick <laughs> my chicken is the villain of the story. He has sneaky eyes, I think. He does. He looks like he's up to something. Very sassy. <laughs> Sass chicken. Did you see that Tim says hi? Oh no, I didn't. Hey Tim. Thanks for joining us. hardest parts about working with charcoal is trying to remember not to rub your ex excess off with your hand especially once you've been working on it for a while you start getting all this extra powder and you just want to take your hand and smear it off mm. and then there goes all your work what would you use um i usually just blow mm -hmm. <laughs> that is my my method of choice. Um, some people will use a very, very, very soft brush. 
Um, depending on the size that you're working on, if it's not taped down, just picking up and tapping. And tapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I've done that, and you just end up, well, it's all over your work, and you probably ruined it, and then it's also all over your hands. Yep. If it's not already all over your hands. With the way I work, it's, it's already there. <laughs> I'm already doomed. Beto Mac, Beto Mac, B T M B T O M A K. Thanks for joining us and um, our little punk bird used us here. Actually, what I'm doing here may not even be my final layer. I may choose to do one more later, um, do another like fine um, fixative, workable fixative spray and come back to it. I have a few core shadows that I want to darken, but I want to make sure that I have a nice um, foundation for them first. Good question, Mike. So, um, compressed charcoal is going to be heavier. Um, it's not going to move around on your paper as easily. Um, it's better for working when you finally have down a good idea of what you're going to be working on or what your final image layout is going to be. Um, vine, charcoal, um, which, you know, is, you, a lot of people, is willow, um, is the um, type of, um, sorry, I got obsessed with a, a crease there. Um, is the type of vine charcoal that people use. You usually start with that because it's so light. You can, once you blow it on the off the page, it's pretty much gone and there's hardly any lines left. A lot of painters will use vine, char uh, vine charcoal to start off with because it's something that doesn't show through their paintings and it's just very temporary. Um, Vine charcoal is also good for 
um, light applications of charcoal if you want a soft look. However, compressed charcoal also comes in um, different different weights and so you can have like a really really dark to a somewhat softer That's um, that's actually a really good way to do it, or tracing paper, but that still runs the risk of smudging it. Um, honestly, I find the best practice is just learn to draw using your arm and really learning to be steady. Um, some people choose to use like a drawing bridge if you're working flat like this. Um, you can lay that out and it'll rep, you'll be able to rest your arm or your wrist on it and then go in from there. And so you don't have to worry about touching. But I, I still like keeping it at a distance. Only because I know myself and I know if I start leaning in or if I'm using some other utensil, I myself might personally hurt the picture with the utensil or start laying on it or something with my other arm while I'm thinking. Hey Sherry Susan, thanks for joining us. I'm just working on adding some details and depth to this charcoal drawing here. Giving it a little bit more life as it's been sitting in shadows for years. Workable fixatives. Um, they're great for using when you want to continue your work because um, continue your work later because they somewhat solidify the drawing, but not enough that you can't come back and with an eraser pick out different elements. Whereas if you're using um, like your final fixative, final spray. Uh, fixative, then that's sealing everything in and it's not going anywhere. Of course I say that, but no fixative is terribly, horribly perfect, so please, please, please don't go and <laughs> spray fix your piece and then later it gets smudged and you go, well, uh, Jamie over at Jerry's said it's it will maintain, it will hold your image really well, but that doesn't mean you don't still want to put your piece behind glass or 
put a protective layer of, like, say, tracing paper or something over it. Um, and then the spray, the workable fixative again, it just allows you to get layers on top of layers while still being able to do subtractive work. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, a mild adhesive. And it won't stick to you, but it makes the charcoal stick to the paper. Just not so much that you can't help it budge a little. Oh, thank you, Sherry. This is one that's been many years in the making. So you said um, the tracing paper mm -hmm. is a good idea to put over it. Would you secure that with anything? Like, I'm assuming for like storage before you frame or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I usually, honestly, at the top uh, and bottom just use some tape use some um, probably uh, even just drafting tape it doesn't have to be like, like super yeah it doesn't have to be uh, super um, adhesive I mean unless you're going to be tossing this piece everywhere around then super adhesive would be good but um, just some masking tape even it's good as long as it's on the back of your piece don't tape the front of your piece please I mean unless you want to do that then by all means Can you guys hear the cicadas over the speakers? They sound, they're so loud here right now. I don't think they're picking up too bad, but I hear them. I just don't understand why they have to be so loud. <laughs> they want everybody to know they're here. I also don't understand why they have to be so big. <laughs> I hate them so much. Aw, but they love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to like sneak past one at my apartment complex the other day. It was just like guarding the sidewalk. You it was not a fun experience. You ninjaed by it. Could have been dead, mm. but I just didn't want to find out. <laughs> you know, I make jewelry with those guys if you have, ever find their shelves. Yeah, you can resin them. They do make very pretty jewelry. It's like when people do the butterfly wing art. Mm -hmm. But they have special websites, so you don't have to worry about killing killing okay. anything. Yeah, I do. I do not support the killing of butterflies and living creatures. I'm the person that saves the spiders. Sorry, guys. I take them outside. I don't know if I told you this before, but some of my old friends had a dog that would like catch roaches if they were in their house and take them outside like and in its mouth and release them. And I thought that was the wildest thing I've ever seen. That's crazy. Not, I never want to experience it. I mean, I yeah, I don't know if you're a person that loves roaches, if that's like a good thing because in one way looking at it, you're like, oh good, the roach is now out of my... Neutralized. <laughs> area but at the same time now it's outside and it's waiting for me 
Well, people always get mad when I release things like spiders and they say they're gonna come back in. I don't think that's true with everything. Of course, now that I've said that, I'm gonna go home and maybe I shouldn't, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't put that out there in the world. I come home and my house is gonna be full of spiders. That have already visited once. Yeah. Well, Tim's at home right now, I believe, so um, might get a call here in a second if that's the case, because he'll be the first one to know. Sherry asks um, if the sizing Emmy used on the gilding class, mm -hmm. if you think that's the same as wallpaper sizing, it's not, right? It's the, it's metal leaf sizing that she used. Uh, which size, which? She used the Mona Lisa sealer, or this Mona Lisa sizing for the, the leaf. It wouldn't hmm. be the same quality as wallpaper sizing, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think so. That's... Yeah. Yeah, we can look that up, though. Just to double check. Um, so for somebody getting started out drawing... Let's see. That's actually a sort of a tricky question. Um, I would definitely recommend a set, and we actually carry one, the Cezanne graphite pencils that have different pencils of different hardnesses. Um, that's a great way to get acquainted with the different um, hardnesses and softnesses of um, a dry material. So once you get used to working with those, it becomes much easier to start working with charcoal, which is a much more finicky and loose material. Um, I would also start working not just with a hard eraser, but a kneaded eraser like what I'm using here. These are great. This is a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. But it's basically just like putty. It's, I think it's a lot of fun to use. Some people are a little disturbed by them because of their texture. Um, but if you can get past that, they're great because you can create a big surface and pull away large chunks or you can bend it in any way you need and create like a point and then get in and get out fine tiny little details yeah so I would also recommend um and this is me, personally, a good spiral bound sketchbook. And I like spiral bound just because um, several of them, it's easy to get the pages out. Now do some do come with perforated pages with the bound versions, and those are nice too. Um, and then as far as techniques when you're starting out drawing, I would start very loose while looking at your subject and doing things like gesture drawings. And there are several great artists out there um, that you can take inspiration from and who also will do gesture drawing classes, and by that I mean they will have a model come up, do different poses, and then you just sit and quickly scribble um, 
the gesture, which is just quick shapes of the human form. Um, and it's a really good practice to get your arm loosened up for drawing. Can we can we find out more about the um, wallpaper? Yes. So I looked it up, mm -hmm. um, and it seems like wallpaper sizing is more to prepare your walls for the wallpaper. Um, and also, we don't think that it would be archival. Okay. And then, but the metal leaf sizing is like formulated specifically for leafing materials. Okay, so you would pretty much just want to stick I, with I, that? I think so. Like, I'm not saying that it might not work, but you wouldn't be getting the, the highest same. quality, which if you're going to do leafing, you're going to want to look yeah. highest quality to me. Yeah. Especially with a technique that's so involved. Hey Jason, welcome. Um, let's see. Yep, Libby, you pretty much got it right. Just the basics. See, I feel like there was somebody, something I was missing. Oh yeah, Sherry, I agree. Spiral or perforated. If I if I had my way with the the art supplies of the world. Oh yeah, I love a spiral mail, hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know what it is about it. I, like I mean, aside. Yeah. Yeah, aside from <laughs> that whole thing. I mean, aside from functionality, it's they're just really nice to have. It's a nice thing to hold on to. on an old piece you know sometimes you put things away and then you realize you um, may have been looking at them for a while thinking I should do something something else to that or you run across it again and you get excited and you're like oh yeah I, I should uh, finish that up I never got it quite to where I wanted so that's what this piece is and I'm just going back in right now and darkening my darks, adding in a few more highlights here and there. I just wanted to make this piece have a little bit more punch to it.
I get this really nice black when I first lay down my compressed charcoal, but then once I blend, or smudge rather, um, use my blending stump, it fades the black a little bit. So again, another reason for going back, using the spray fixative so that it gives it the workable spray fixative. Let me be specific about that before adding another layer to make sure that that under layer of charcoal is just a little bit tacky, stays to the paper a little bit better, and won't be pushed around when I add another layer on top. And then I'll be able to get the keep that deep, deep black that I love. Jamie, do you mind uh, explaining again the magic of the blending stump? <laughs> the magic of the blending stump. Um, so it is a wonderful tool. Um, I am somebody that does really like getting messy and using my fingers, but even so, the blending stump helps keep your oils that naturally occur doesn't mean you didn't take a bath it just means you're human and um, so your fingers have oils on them that will press the charcoal into the paper and make it difficult to move around later on now um, the blending stump also makes it really great um, for gradients I mean it is is wonderful for helping you achieve a nice smooth gradient and if you're using a textured paper um, which is good for charcoals and pastels because it helps to pull um, the charcoal and pastel onto the paper then you can go back with a blending stump and just simply rub it in and get into those little grooves and really smooth things out and get um, rid of those bumps if that is something you don't want. You can also use the blending stump lighter and still leave the texture there. It just depends on how much pressure you apply. Oh, and the reason this probably seemed to come across as a pencil is because, as you may or may not be able to see, this one here has gotten very dark with use. And I was saying earlier that with the blending stump, sometimes when the end gets really dirty, what you can do is use it basically like a pencil or vine charcoal and take it to another place where you might want to apply just a very soft application of the charcoal. And so it just becomes another drawing tool in itself to add. Um, add to the piece you're working on and help create a few more shadows. But again, if I wasn't using it that way, I would go ahead and clean it off just by using the um, little sandpaper stick that 
comes with the Creative Mart Complete Charcoal and Pastel Blending Set, um, which was this little guy right here. And you just sharpen it uh, like you would your nails. It's like having a nail file or an emery board. And then clean it off and then you're ready to go and you have, you'll have a clean end like this one to work with. You said that's a raven skull, right? Crow skull. Crow skull. Yeah. I actually found him when I was in a teenager in my backyard, and he has followed me, been with me ever since. He had a teenage phase, too, where he got a nose ring, and it stayed there. <laughs> and so... You should definitely get him, like, a black emo wig. Now that's gonna happen. <laughs> You're gonna see me later shopping up little, shopping for little tiny wigs. <laughs> Actually, I guess I. We are Jerry's. I could just make one. I've seen your Halloween costumes. So you could just make one. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be my next uh, open studio hour. You guys, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna take a, a sharp turn from two-dimensional art and go right into the art of making wigs for um, apparently bird skulls. I'm okay with this. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Oh yeah, the that's actually something I should have mentioned. Um, I when I work in um, charcoal or graphite, a lot of the dry mediums, I do really love starting with a colored surface. So thank you, Jason, for mentioning that. Um, and there are lots of great colored papers that you can start off with. This was a Canson. They offer lots of different colors in their papers. Um, a lot of people think that you just have um, pastel paper that is just, uh, say, the gray tones or um, warm, or there's even the craft uh, paper. But when I say craft, I mean sort of that brown baggish um, type of color. But they do specifically make awesome colors like this that really pop just for pastels and charcoal. So you need to darken back here a little bit. It gets a little confusing. 
with some of these more intricate shapes. One thing I will say when you are using a blending stump, you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. You can get to a point where you just get so excited about smudging the material around that eventually you just end up with what's basically a muddy mess. Um, so I highly recommend once you start uh, working with charcoals, maybe practicing on paper, doing different strokes with your charcoal, um, with different amounts of pressure applied, getting different amounts of the charcoal down, and then seeing what that does when you use your blending stump and pull it across paper. No, the, the Canson paper does not. I know it might look like construction paper on screen just because of the color, but it, it isn't that uh, fuzzy kind of feel that's going to um, peel and tear. Um, this is really good and it'll stand up uh, to almost anything that you do to it. Now I'm not talking about if you're like really grinding in there, but if you are doing a drawing like this, which would take um, a few days, and even doing some erasing, it's, it's not gonna do the horrible things that construction paper will do. A good object for a fir for a first time pastel, you're gonna hate me. A spear. Um, honestly, in any medium, I feel like doing a sphere, a cone, and a cube are great ways to learn. And also, uh, doing that with a heavy light source, and I mean just a pinpoint light source so you can really see the shadows because something else uh, when you're starting out drawing that you're going to learn is that there are even different parts to a shadow. Um, like you have your core shadow that's in the middle and you really want to be able to focus on that and not say like a flower and all the petals and everything. You need to get those basics down first. About five minutes left. D Van D skulls. You think skulls are a a good one for first timers? I think if I try to skull my very first time, I might have I might have had a heart attack. You're more daring than I. but not saying that it isn't great subject matter. Skulls are very fascinating to draw. with the way I'm work, I'm holding three different materials in my hands at once. Several people will just do one at a time, but this is the way that I found works best for me because in my mind, I'm hopping from element to element in my painting or my drawing or whatever it is I'm working on. Um, I'll do the same with brushes. I'll load up two brushes and go back and forth. And then just as I'm looking at the piece, pull from my hands what I need.
Yeah, I definitely love using more jewel tones, Libby. I find that those, I mean, those speak to me personally. I love jewel tones, um, especially when you start getting those, those rich, rich blacks. There's just something very, very beautiful about that, that deep color with them. So you're, you're a multi-tool user too, D Van D. Glad there are, are uh, fellow, I don't know. I, is, would you be a temporary art supply hoarder in your hands? What would you call that? I've been called a magpie before where I just, collect and go towards things. Maybe that's a, my, my collection issue, so I feel like I have to hold all my tools close by. But it's just really nice to, especially when I'm trying to go fast or work quickly, have everything right in my hands. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for uh, this studio hour. Um, please like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. And we also have another live show uh, every Tuesday with Emmy Klein, uh, Jerry's Live. Please tune in. It's a great show, very educational. And I'll see you next time. Bye.